These properties are breeding grounds for rodents and hiding places for roaming dogs. And, and you know what? I'm, I'm tired of being attacked by these dogs. I'm tired of having to pick up their crap, and I'm tired of having to, to bury the stinky dead bodies that are dumped uh, in these vacant lots. Um, you know the problem. You've, I'm, I'm sure you've all seen it. But for me to go on, it's, it's just whining. But I do have a solution. Uh, it's a green tractor. Uh, several of these green tractors can be implemented um, for, the, for less than the cost of a zero turn more. Uh, this tractor could easily be made from recycled materials found in areas like we, li li we live in, these blighted areas. Uh, it's much safer than a lawnmower and can be safely used around children. Um, there's no air, po air pollution. There's no noxious fumes. There's no dangerous combustible um, uh, fuels being used for these tractors. An eight-year-old can skillfully use these tractors safely. Uh, they only take 10 minutes, five to 10 minutes a day to maintain them. Um, it is fueled by the vegetation it maintains. Uh, every square inch of the lot that, uh, that it's uh, uh, maintaining uh, inspects for bugs, which removes them and is also used as fuel. Uh, another byproduct, um, oh, instead of exhaust, I'm going dim here, uh, instead of exhaust, um, high quality organic fertilizers is distributed throughout this vacant lot. Um, another byproduct is in demand and purchased by most Americans daily, uh, and is used by most Americans daily. And due to its being a, a produced in an organic matter, many consumers are willing to pay more than twice as much for it from, from this tractor, produced from this tractor. Now what this tractor is, is um, it's a movable chicken coop. This tractor is, um, it's, its byproducts are organic eggs and meat. Um, if put in place in the early spring, these chickens will keep the problem lots maintained until snow um, and provide superior food in our food deserts. I hope and pray that you see the wisdom of creating a provision for this green tractor. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker, Madam Clerk. Our next speaker is Ms. Roxanne Adair. Ms. Adair. Thank you, Council, for allowing us to speak. My name is Roxanne. I uh, reside in the college cultural area, and as I'm sure many of you have seen on the news in the last few weeks, um, I was recently ticketed for keeping chickens in my backyard. Um, this came directly from the Blight Enforcement Office. And I'm sure you all know the story, and I'm sure many people in the audience also know the story. Um, before I get started, I would just like anybody that's here in support, if you live here, if you care about healthy food, accessible food, just stand up, raise your hand, let them know, let them know that you're here because you pay attention and because you care. I'm also a business owner in this city. I employ roughly about 15 people on my educational urban farm. One of the students in the front row holding up the sign is one who personally has been affected and who's come to my house and who's seen the chickens and who's learned something from them. It's not just the students that I work with. It's not just my employees. My neighbor's children have named my chickens. They've been there since the moment that they were a week old. I've raised them by hand. They've been there for three years. Three years they've been in my backyard. Before those three years, I've been coming to city council meetings, I've been working with advocacy groups, and we've been asking you to change this ordinance for eight years. Eight years. The ordinance that's on the city books, you can look it up if you like, it's 9-15. You can look, you can see, there are definitions from 1953 that tell you how you can keep chickens in the city, but then there's one that overrides them all from 1968 that says that, no, we're just, no chickens are allowed. It's been on the books since 1968. The city is such a different place than it was in 1968. Our food system is a different thing than it was in 1968. 
This isn't just an issue of one lady, you know, who cares about her pets or her chickens. This isn't just an issue of, you know, well, should we let her keep them or not? This is an issue of social justice. This is an issue of economy in this city. If people aren't allowed to have even the choice to raise their own food, how are we ever going to be self-sustainable? How are we ever going to further a city where, you know, people can't afford to go to the grocery store and spend $5 for a dozen of organic eggs? You can't. I mean, I can't speak for everyone, but I can speak for myself and most people that I know in the city of Flint. We can't afford that. I can't eat eggs from the grocery store. I have a severe penicillin allergy. I don't know if you guys know, but the majority of the eggs and the chicken that you buy from the grocery store, they're all treated with penicillin. I have an allergic reaction. I break out in hives. Sometimes I can't breathe. I got the chickens so that I could have access to food that I deserve to eat. And I really, I'm asking you, I know my time is up. I'd like to ask you today to suspend the ordinances um, prohibiting the keeping of chickens in the city until further resolution can be made to come up with um, a plan uh, that's in line with the Planning Commission, that's also in line with what the people of the city of Flint want, that's also going to work with a permit process, with regulation, with something that's enforceable, which is important here, I'm sure we all know. Um, but I would like to ask you to suspend the, the ordinance prohibiting the keeping of chickens in the city Thank until you. we can make change Thank together. You. <laughs> be, be, before the, the clerk calls the next speaker, if I could ask one of the officers to please open the other back door. The doors need to be opened in the uh, council chambers. Thank you very much for uh, doing that. I appreciate it. Mr. President. Uh, after the speakers, Councilman Neely. Our next speaker is Pastor W. Whitaker. Pastor Whitaker. To this council, to all who are present, I become highly offended when a man is supposed to be leading. He walks out his total disrespect not only to you, but to us who right. come here. Right. He can get nine nine thousand dollars every two weeks, That's and right. he can go back to Lansing. He can right. report. Come here and talk about meeting with a few persons. How are you going to have unity when everyone is not there? That's right. One accord and unity has to be. Everything that he said when he came here, it has to be his way. But yet he wants everybody on board. Let him have his way. That's right. Let him pay the taxes. He's not going to pay the taxes. But the thing that gets me is that he can come in here and he can be just as suave and he can dress professionally. But what he's doing and his action and attitude is not professional. That's right. Now you can buy into it or whatever way you want to. It doesn't matter to me. I'm just here. Hitler said something one time. He said, if you tell a lie long enough and you tell it convincingly enough, you will get enough people to follow. If I had the paper and stuff, I could just write, write just as suave and prolific as he can because he has it right there, no respect. Have y'all got parliamentary procedure put down yet? It doesn't seem like it. And then we read about the Pledge of Allegiance. That's the biggest joke going on now. What? Unity, love, harmony. You violated our rights with the financial manager. It's supposed to be 48 financial managers. Why did you target five? Why is Detroit getting relief of $100 million and you can't get any money here? What's the problem? Gosh, what school did we go to? I know I'm not that ignorant. I'm ignorant about a lot of things, but I mean, I can count a little bit. Sixty-eight thousand dollars the last time that y'all found, and no relief for persons who are paying for the water. The water stinks. I'm not a scientist. Everything the reports are that the water is not treated the same way as the other water. How long do we have to drink this filthy water, smell it, and get in our clothes that it goes into our pores and affects our bodies? How is it going to deal with the children, the senior citizens, those that don't buy bottled water? How many of the persons that's making the decisions live in this city? Thank you.
Our next speaker is Mr. A.C. Dumas. Mr. Dumas. My name is A.C. Dumas, and I reside in the city of Flint. I just want to say a couple things, maybe two or three things, that first of all, I would urge this uh, council, although you cannot vote on the budget, but a symbolic vote during your time of discussion. You can say that I do not support uh, Darnell Early's budget. It's his budget. You read the agenda, it says his orders. But what he did, he threw it up there as though it was a collaboration. Well, it really was because some of y'all voted to bring him in. You know, it, it, when you start off wrong, guess what? You end up wrong. The way you start off is the way you end. You can't flip flop. So I wanted to say that. I was delighted to have uh, Garcia on my program, The Truth Shall Make You Free. Uh, every Saturday morning at 9.30 on WFLT 1420, and we talked about chickens. And the overwhelmingly people that called in, the majority of them, I think about 95% of them, the lines were full, said, do not disturb the chickens. What they're concerned with is rats, raccoons, skunks, all these vermin that's in vacant houses, and nothing is done, and they run rampant. They destroy uh, gardens, they destroy lines, and I think that, you know, and to send the police after 30 days, send the police. Listen, a dog got shot yesterday at Burston. You had 20 police cars down there for a shooting of a dog. I know because I live at 533 East Rankin. I heard the, sh the, the, the shot, and I went, am I right, Councilman Nolan? It was 20 police. They had it roped off. You, you think it was a school shooting for a dog. Aren't the citizens worth better than a dog? I say that because in the budget, you're going to lay off police. You're going to lay off firefighters. That's not... You know, I'm going to say this and I'm going to sit down. We the people, don't do it in my name. As we the people, don't do it in my name. Our next speaker is Ms. Carolyn Shannon. Ms. Shannon. To the wonderful leaders of this city, may God be with you all. Carolyn Shannon, 7th Ward. I do not pretend to be smarter than the average bear, but I will let you know that I am for all of the citizens of Flint. And when we unite, we can bring back democracy. Something that's missing in this city is hope, love, joy, and happiness. Because the emergency managers throughout the state of Michigan, which are very few, they have tainted, disgusted me, and made our city say we do not have enough intelligent people to run it. But I've been told by a professor at the University of Michigan that we do have enough people that are intelligent that can run our city. In fact, anyone in this audience can run this city. Why? Because they are here, because they love the city. But I do not believe in 
a carpetbagger coming into my city and telling us what to do. It is wrong when he walked in, it's wrong when he walked out. We do not need a transitional uh, group. We do not need a blue ribbon group. We have nothing to transition. There are all, uh, over 100,000 people have left this city. So you run it like they've left the city. And we don't need anyone to come in here and tell us how to run Flint. If you're a carpetbagger, make the taxes and changes in the city where you live. But do not make any suggestions on our city because we live here. You're cutting the throats of the senior citizens. You're cutting the throats of the young people that are trying to stay here. The schools are out of order. The police is out of order. Everything in this city is out of order. Nobody is trying to really address that. Address the things that are going. We need safety. We need our city to be clean. And all I'm asking you to do is to vote no on everything Mr. Early said because he cannot make rules for us. Thank you very much. Mr. Quincy Murphy, Mr. Murphy. Good evening. My name is Quincy Murphy and um, I wanted to speak on the budget tonight, but um, really what I want to speak on before I talk about the budget is, did y'all just see how um, Donnell Early just came before this council and presented this plan and walked out? I felt so bad. I felt stuffed on. I think it was um, disrespectful. I'd rather have um, seen one of his staff members come up here and do a presentation to, than to see him come up here and do that presentation and then walk right out the um, city council chamber as if our voices it don't matter. What we got to say don't matter. And I think it was a very disrespect. And I hope, how, how long he got to, um, before he can get up out of here? 18 months? Is it 18? Is 15, 14, 12? I, the sooner the better. I don't appreciate it and I don't agree with it and I don't care who um, support him and don't support him. I think it was very disrespectful and I don't care how much money he get paid. He could take that money and if I was working for him, I'd be fired because I'd be, I'd been a walk up off the job. If I had somebody that was my supervisor doing people like he doing, I don't agree with it and I don't support it. And um, when y'all go and have a meeting with him next time, let him know I think he's very disrespectful to be a professional that he so-called he is. And on the other hand, on the budget, I don't agree with this um, water increase. W Pipes been busting since Woodrow Stanley and since Sharp, since Rutherford. Pipes been busting in the city of Flint for the longest. They ain't go up on our water bill then, so why would you go up on our water bill and um, tell us that infrastructure and the maintenance is all of that. If you can give Genesee Tower $850,000, then you can find some other money to fix the infrastructure instead of trying to raise people taxes. So when y'all go down there and y'all talking about finding money, y'all if y'all can find money for everything else, y'all can find money for downtown Flint, y'all can find some other money besides um, taxing the, um, I, I call them, it's a, another form of, of a poverty pimp trying to pimp poor folks. I don't agree with it. It's wrong. And it's a shame that we done got here today where y'all want to tell us that um, pipes that's been busting, even before the emergency manager came here, pipes is busting. And y'all still didn't go up on our water bill. And now y'all want to say because pipes busting, get some insurance. Claim it with your insurance company or something. But how can you charge us that much money for um, infrastructure? This stuff messed up. Our next speaker is Ms. Bethany Hazard. Ms. Hazard. My name is Bethany Hazard and I agree with everyone here. The emergency manager was rude and he got up and left 
before he heard the people. Obviously, he doesn't care about the people here. The decline here, no one's looked at why people are leaving. I go to every rummage sale in my neighborhood over and over again, ask the homeowners, why are you leaving? And they tell me, I can live in Schwartz Creek cheaper, the water's not expensive, uh, the taxes are ridiculous, the police don't come. Nobody is looking at the real reason why people are leaving. And that really upsets me, because I've watched all my friends leave my neighborhood. Every single one. I'm the last, almost the last homeowner left my block, which was replaced by rentals. Now I hear gunshots. The other day I, there was a gunfight across the street at the rental. Somebody else the day before came and bust, uh, shot out the windows. There's drug dealers all around me. I guess that's what you guys wanted by making these decisions is to turn my neighborhood into a place to be. So that's all I wanted to say. You should find out why people are really leaving. Our next speaker is Mr. R. L. Mitchell. Mr. Mitchell. I'm Mr. R. L. Mitchell. I reside at 3512 Milton Street on the north side of Flint. And for the last two weeks at Burston Field House, police is coming down there breaking up fights. I'm for that baseball game up. And this, and now I hear about the third week, they go down there and Mr. Dumas talking about they had a place surrounded just for a dog. And I want, for the record, I want y'all to know, it better not be my dog y'all shot. <laughs> what can we need to call? What? I want to, I want reimburse me if he's dead. You got that, Mr. President? I mean, Mr. Hey man, you hear what I'm talking about? I mean, like, wait a minute. Do you two city attorney, Peter Bay, put that on record? I want to be reimbursement. And uh and, and another thing about this dude addressed this chicken stuff in Flint. Talking about uh bushes and stuff and this fella right here. He look like he's an Indian. But uh I know when I was, I, I got a son, he was born in Vice Centennial, 1976. On his seventh birthday, I decided to buy him a, the first thing I decided to buy him was a rooster. I had to go in Grand Blank to get him, and they said, where you going? His aunties told my, his mama, I was going to Grand Blank to get the boy a rooster. They said, you bring it back down and we're going to do something to you. They threatened right on the corner of Austin and Fulton. I just, I couldn't believe, and I didn't talk about 19, this woman talking about 1968. Oh, uh, when, that's when they killed that preacher man. And now we, and, and now it's, I believe it was, it was like, it's seven, it was 1976, 78, when all this happened on Austin Street, and the came was by a bird, and they're talking about, it was in the paper talking. I looked behind me, and the chick holding up that sign talking about, you ain't being ain't, ain't bad to be a chicken. Well, we just, hold up again. Ain't no harm being a chicken. What that? Oh, uh, and I, I want you to know for the record, I ain't gonna be cross cross between the Hatfield and the McCoy talking about getting shot or turning the Flint town into a junk in Alabama and Mississippi garbage. Say, I'll be a real jingo before I get shot by a junkin' country bunker around here. You got that? You stinking junkin. Hell face drunken. I wonder what them Indians go up there and scalp them bones. Right, right. And chill right. when the name of tickle. Right. Yo, the jump that you is. Our next speaker is Miss Linda Bell. Miss Bell. Thank you for allowing me to speak, and good evening to everybody. Uh, my name is Linda Bell Kahelski. I live at 1499 Autumn Drive. And the reason I'm here is to help revitalize Flint by offering jobs and opportunities for people who have skilled 
um, abilities in sign language interpreting. I'm looking around and I notice that the city of Flint does not have accessible communications for people who are blind, deaf, hard of hearing, or deaf blind. And I don't see um, screens where they can read text. I don't see where they can communicate and understand what people are saying and be involved and be a part of the community. And I'm offering to create a 911 American Sign Language app. I know that the emergency has a 911 text, but I've been a sign language interpreter all my life. My mother is deaf. She cannot read. She cannot write. If she got stuck somewhere, she could not text to let somebody know where she's at. So I'm creating a, uh, I'm developing a um, American Sign Language app so that we can have accessible communication for all people. And um, I'm looking for funding. I'm hoping to get to the economic development to look at my business plan and get back to me. I made nine copies. I see there's more than nine people here, but um, I. Okay, and then somebody else can get back with me, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Ms. Diane Slosser. Hello, my name is Diane Slosser. Thank you for giving me a chance to speak. I think that the subject of chickens has been covered really well, but I did have a couple of thoughts. Uh, one thing, I, I pardon the pun. So sure, is this better? Thank you. Sure. Uh, pardon the pun, but. I think people in this town, GM, when they left, they really took most of the eggs out of our basket. This town was left with not too many eggs. The people that are left had to make do. They have to make do with very little. In many cases, there's not enough jobs. There's not enough opportunity in this town. People need to be able to grow their own food. They need to be able to have a garden on an empty lot. They need to be able to have chickens. The, the good thing about chickens is that they don't take up very much space, and they give a lot back. They're not very stinky. I mean, they're just like any other pet. They're not going to use your toilet. You have to have a plan for the poo. No matter what your pet is, that's what you have to do. They're not unsanitary. If you read up on how factory farms are with chickens, you'll be revolted. If you can have your own chickens at home, you know what they're eating, so you know what you're eating. Um, and the other thing is that if people can have chickens in their yard, um, it's going to help the economy of our area. I live close to Knobloch's Hardware. They could be selling chicken coops. They could be selling chicken wire. They could be selling chicken food, chicken grit chicken books, you know, anybody that gets into any hobby thinks, oh, it's not going to cost very much, but the, they just keep buying this and that to go with it, and it, it really is one way to revitalize part of the economy. I think any time you can add a little element of diversity to your economy, it helps strengthen it. And then I was also kind of laughing over here. We were thinking, instead of back to the bricks, couldn't we have back to the chicks? We could have, we could have people with uh, cooking different egg recipes, and we could have people bringing their chickens downtown and uh, telling all about them. <laughs> we could have people showing their plans for chicken tractors. Anyway, I think that's enough comedy for tonight. <laughs> Just wanted to share my thoughts. Thank you. <laughs> Our next speaker is uh, Ms. Dorothy Middleton. Mrs. Middleton. Hello, I'm here to support the uh, lifting of the ban uh, for keeping chickens. I think it's uh, much needed. Uh, oftentimes, uh, we see kids loitering the streets, they abusing animals, uh, and uh, going on to abusing. Uh, each other, and you know, oftentimes 
we need to uh, uh, give them opportunities to care for uh, their pets and chickens was a wonderful opportunity. Uh, they can, um, it could be an enterprise uh, selling eggs and uh, another thing that they can do is uh, uh, use the uh, manure for compost and I have started that uh, m myself. I am an urban uh, farmer and uh, I am doing this now, and, and it's a wonderful enterprise that uh, puts the nutrients back into the ground. Uh, I use a compost tumbler, and uh, it just gives fantastic results. I have some of that compost right here. It uh, doesn't smell. Uh, you can generate this in two weeks. Uh, it's straw, wood shavings, uh, chicken manure, and I do have rabbits, so that's in here too, the rabbit manure. It uh, gives absolutely wonderful results. So you have uh, an enterprise there selling the eggs, uh, uh, making the compost. Uh, they can also...